cups of that stuff. Yeah. Can I take a scrap of it? Yeah. Okay, so let's just say, let me get a square cut here. Here's the piece we're going to reinforce. When I reinforce a piece, I always use Y. So I'm going to cut some strips. And notice I'm cutting these strips across the um, across the weft of the fabric, the direction in which it folds the easiest. If you go to fold this this way, See how it doesn't really like to fold? I mean, you can get it down there, but it just wants, I mean, when you stitch it, it wants to pucker. Much better way to do it is to fold it like this. Look how much crisper that edge is. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you stitch it down. Okay, so I always like to play that. I mean, it's, it's kind of a fabric waste, but... So you have a lot of these different pieces. You cut out a lot of squares, and usually this is just ripping you know, from one salvage edge to the other, widths, you know, different widths along the whole thing. So you just get them all going the same way. So you can fold it, let's see. That's our lunch call, I think. I think we just get this out of the way. Right? Mm -hmm. And if I was layering this up, uh, the way you let me just leave that for there. I'm going to show you the way before lunch that we do the wrong way to do it. The wrong way to do it. Would be to reinforce like this going around the corner. You just make it a little bit more. Um, this is our reinforcing piece on the underside. And I usually staple all these covers up before I even get involved in doing any stitching. It can take a while, and it can be a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle. This is the way most people, or most fabricators, staple pull it. Most people, will, most fabricators, well, especially I don't know how many actually do it the way I do it or not, but... So then I'm going to trim this off to the edge. I'm just doing a quick one on this right before lunch, and then after lunch I'll show you the way, the way I do it. I know, Dobie. So then, here's our reinforcement, okay? And... Let's just do it the way, just, just do it two inch, just so. Most people do it two inch, or two and a half inch. I don't think there's many people that do. Okay, so here's our reinforcement piece, and we cut in on a diagonal to the point here, like that, right? And then you'd fold this in. Now this is the direction that doesn't like to fold, right? Changing to the direction it does like to fold, with a weak point, with a weak spot at the corner.
this is the way a good portion of your fabricators are going to reinforce something. And there's actually nothing really wrong with this if, you know, depending on the quality level you're trying to achieve and the price point you're trying to match because this does take more time than doing it this way. This is, you'll see, there's a lot of tension on This is inherently weak. You spell weak. W-E-A-K. Or W-E-E-K, depending. It's that time That's a week. weak corner. And the thing is, is this <clears throat> is, you can see the difference between the way it lays down this way and the way it lays down that way. Quite a difference, isn't it? Mm -hmm. See the puckering? Mm -hmm. See that? See how it lays down flat? Flat. Pucker. Very bad. Okay? And this is happy. Okay? So you got pucker and flat. This is because you're folding on weft. But the thing is, is you have no control over the directionality when you do it this way because when you do a corner, and I'm just, most of the, what we're going to be talking about is corners. You've got one piece, so when you do this and you go around, you're going to change the direction whether you like it or not. Okay? And after lunch, I'll show you the other way.